hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about mobile applications for NAS and although I'm loath to use these words on the internet I've got to say if there's one app that you're going to install for your NAS this is the one to go for. Yes it's an incredibly trite statement but when you set up your NAS for the first time whether you're going to be using a mobile phone or relying on client applications or DLNA media players to all of you, I would still recommend that you install DS Finder on your iOS or Android device. Now in today's video, I am gonna talk about this app. I'm gonna tell you things that I like, things that I don't like, and ultimately try to plead a case for why you should install it. Because a number of the apps that I've talked about in recent weeks, not just from Synology, but from QNAP, Acer Store, TerraMaster, WD, and more, I've said some of them you should have, some of them you shouldn't. But this is one of the few apps that I would say is essential to your NAS purchase. The reason being is when you do want to configure your NAS, it can be a real pain to have to use a desktop computer to do it. And because Synology NAS doesn't uh, utilize things like LCD screens, it doesn't utilize HDMI and KVM or keyboard video mouse setups, having the ability to access and configure the NAS on the fly can make a huge difference to not only the access of your data but generally the management of your device and particularly in the event that it needs your attention such in a raid failure or a security intrusion so having a mobile application has twofold benefits one of course the ability to configure the device but secondly the ability to do it fast it's very important that you're able to do these things as quickly as possible and ultimately not lose any time or data and i think DS Finder does it better than any other app that I've seen, not only from other brands, but from Synology themselves. I wish the attention to detail in this app was present in a lot of their other apps. Notwithstanding the fact that you can set a NAS up from, you know, all the way through from firmware to RAID installation with the app, as which we did with a DS720 Plus in 2020, we set the NAS up with uh, blank hard drives, no OS ready, with just a mobile app. But this app bridges a very fine line between using all of the applications and features and functionality of a NAS on a mobile desktop, but does it without complexity. Is it perfect? No. There's still things missing from it. There's things that I'd like to see, and I will touch on them throughout the video. But let's go into DS Finder. Now, I've already logged into a NAS here, but why don't we go ahead and log out of this NAS just to show you how easy it is. When you uh, load up the device for the first time, it will search the local area network for NASes, but you can, of course, add NASes remotely if you choose. At the top right option there, you can add an existing device or install a brand new NAS if you choose, or go into the settings options there where you can configure some little bits in the background. It should be mentioned we are using version 2.3.3, but other versions may have been updated and released since the recording of this video so do check but as you can see i'm going to go ahead and go into that 1821 plus it finds the information serial number and more and we can see there and go straight into it i have i should add carried over drives where i did a drive migration from a 1621 plus hence the irregularities there in the previous screen don't worry too much about it but let's go ahead and log into this nas admin i'm sorry I spell it correctly admin and password of course you should use a much more secure password than just the word password but nevertheless it's still something you can use let's go ahead and click sign in and there you go you can see the nas now ds finder shouldn't really be thought of as file management you should really look at synology drive and ds file for that but still nevertheless it does present quite a lot of system and storage information first and foremost we can go into the storage manager there that not only shows us the volume that we've created, but you can go into individual information about the drives that you've installed all the way through. And again, you can find out how much storage you've used and the drives that are comprised of that RAID configuration. Obviously, it would be nice to be able to monitor drive health on this, but in Synology's defense, at least on this one, They've got a new tool coming out, Active Insight, which does provide a great deal more information um, on that score in DSM-7, which is certainly worth a look. If we go into User Management, this is where we can add users if we choose quite quickly. So we can call this person Alan, give them a password, go ahead and confirm that password, give them a description, uh, user groups, what they are, are they an admin, or do they have any other features or functionality? Let's make them an admin. 
allow them to change your password if they choose. Click save. Oh, we've got to confirm the password because apparently I spelled it wrong on the fly. Go ahead, click save. Do we want to send them a notification? No. And we've created a user that fast on the mobile app on the fly. Some lovely utility there. They're not the only brand that supply that, but I will say you do seem to do it uh, faster than most. You can enable the Quick Connect system there quite easily to bridge internet connectivity to the device. I won't go into that, but I have already done lots of videos on Quick Connect. So if you want notifications to be pushed, uh, the ones that the NAS might have to do with drive access, IPs, good and bad notifications, updates and more. You can choose whether you want them to be pushed to your phone as well. Update settings, whether you want uh, DSM to update on the fly, as you can see, I do have an update for DSM. If I had push notifications, it would tell me um, that there is a new one, but of course I didn't enable it. And moreover, you can have them to be automatic or manual, and you can go ahead and action an update directly here from the app if you choose. I'm not going to do it now because it might make this video a little bit tougher. System information, you can find out more about it. As you can see, it's the migration of the data onto that new NAS. And if we come out of it there, we can go ahead and look into IP blocking. So you can have a look at um, IPs that have gone into your device and then choose to block them if you like. And again, Nice little options there, but the one I really like is DSM Mobile. This allows you to go into a far more streamlined version of DSM for your mobile device. So again, you can access a number of the features and functionality, such as installing applications and viewing applications that you've already got installed, maybe even run updates on existing applications that might be necessary, all from the comfort of your mobile phone. This feature alone, I think, is one of the best selling points of DS Finder. The fact that you can get into a number of DSM functions directly from this UI. Now remember, you could set up a NAS from the off using this phone. So technically, with the exception of some of the features built into Synology Drive, um, um, uh, sorry, Drive for mobile, as well as DS File, you don't have to have a desktop computer to use your NAS. You can almost run every single feature and functionality with those three apps on a mobile phone. Likewise, going to the App Center here, you can see some of the apps that you can download onto your desktop, uh, sorry, your mobile device. And as you can see, I've already installed these applications here, which are now synced with this, and I can open them directly from this app. Moreover, you can go into the More Settings here and analyze and change a number of these features and functionality. We can go in, go all the way down the options here, lots of things to choose. You can see we've got the Sync option there, and Notifications and Device Listings under a different account. Lots of information there. Let's go back into the app. I won't press back so many times. Um, again, at the top, you can choose to shut it down. Um, you can restart the NAS. If you have multiple NASs, you can click Find Me and that beep there in the background. That is the NAS. Let me know which NAS I'm trying to utilize. The LEDs would have flashed as well. But ultimately, this is why I like DS uh, Finder. I think it's a very multi-purpose app. I think it brings a lot to, to the party. And ultimately, it's still one of the best apps out there for both NAS management on a, a business level and a home level. What would I like to see more? Well, if we go to the desktop here, features that I would like to see is maybe um, d uh, Drive being synchronized with it, maybe some sort of file management. And yes, some might argue, if you go into the application and you go into that DSM mobile, you do have a semblance of that, but not in the same way. You've got access to the shared folders, but and you can access and create more shared folders if you choose. But I think a lot of the control of the desktop isn't quite there. You can see there, installing applications, nice and straightforward. If you have them pre-installed, you can go straight into them like so. That's still trying to log into another NAS. But there is still, at the very least, that connection between other NASs on the local area network that allow you to log in directly, whether you're in that app or flicking between others. And yes, we'll be doing an overview, a brief overview of DS file as well. But, oh, wrong one there. Let's, we want to go back into the management side. Uh, this has been the DS uh, Finder application from Synology. There's not much I would change. I think the UI is pretty swish, and I hope they don't make any changes to this, in at least in terms of the UI, in DSM 7. I think it's still one of the best apps out there for NAS management, and if they could just add inbuilt features for file management, I think this app would be absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.